Hello, I'm Michelle Everett, and along with my husband, Dr. Stephen Everett, we are the host of Great Faith Adventures, where we journey into the Word of God to discover an extraordinary life of overcoming enduring faith. We're going to get right into today's broadcast in just a moment, but Dr. Steve and I want to invite you. We want to invite you to share this broadcast with family and friends. That makes you a media missionary. And also tune in each week and join us for Great Faith Adventures. And we also want to invite you to actually go on some Great Faith Adventures with us. You know, this is more than a television broadcast. It's more than just teaching the word and preaching the word. It is going into all the world with the gospel. That's what Great Faith Adventures is. It's an outreach of our church in Cape Coral, Florida, Kingdom Power and Wisdom Center, and it's our missions arm. We actually take Great Faith Adventures, and for us, what that looks like is prayer expeditions to some of the highest elevations in the United States and across the globe. That's right. You can join our company of intercessors, our expedition teams, whether it's a ground assistance or uh, food prep or actual prayer hikers to some of these high points, you can join us on these great faith adventures. Join our faithful partners and us as God sends us to be his hands and feet, the body of Christ throughout the globe. So if you want more information about that, you can find out about who we are and where we're going next and how you can join us at greatfaithadventures.org. Now, Let's explore the word together today. Are you ready to journey into the word of God? Walk with me in the word. We're in a current series entitled The Love Walk, and we've been going for several weeks in John chapter 14, Colossians chapter 3, and that's where we're going to pick up today. We're going to pick up, if you have your Bible or your device, turn with me, walk with me in the Word to John chapter 14. We're going to start around verse 23. And Colossians 3, we're going to be starting Colossians 3, just about verse 4. And as is our practice in Great Faith Adventures, we're going to walk through this Word line upon line, precept upon precept, for as much time as we have today. And then we'll pick back up on our next visit. Are you ready? Let's walk in the word. John chapter 14. We've already said we've been through line upon line most of this chapter. Today in our love walk, we're picking up on verse 23, where Jesus answered, If anyone really loves me, he will keep my word. He will keep my word, my teaching. My father will love him. And we will come to him, we will come to him, and make our dwelling place with him. Verse 24, one who does not really love me does not keep my words. We're going to focus in on that for our study of the love walk today. So verse 24, one who does not really love me does not keep my words. And the word, the teaching which you hear is not mine, but it is the Father's who sent me. Now, if you've been with Dr. Steve on Tuesday nights for our Tuesday night Bible study and our first Sunday's Life and Leadership in Cape Coral, you know that we are teaching, walking through the Word, teaching about the sent ones, right? So it all comes together in the Word of God. The sent ones are the ones who take the yes to great faith adventures. The sent ones are the Shalia. So on first Sunday's Life and Leadership, you can catch more teaching on that. On Tuesday nights, you can get even more teaching on that. Wednesday night Bible study and Thursday nights for great faith adventures. Now, if you happen to be watching the program at another time on Dominion Television or on our Roku channel, our Apple TV channel, or the archives, whatever day you can get it, get in the Word and walk through it with us about being a sent one. Life is meant to be a great faith adventure. That's how God designed it. And sent ones learn to, if anyone really loves me, he will keep my word, my teaching, my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. 
See, we are those mansions. We're being made mansions for the Father's occupancy. We're the body of Christ, the temple of God, where he dwells. He indwells us, and that's his representation in the earth. Well, in the Love Walk series that we're doing, we're learning how to practically apply these teachings. We're learning how to practically apply the word so we can actually live this out in reality. So that church is not a social entity for us. It's fellowship. It's the intimate sharing of our lives together. But it's just not a social country club where good people go to gather. It has more than that. We must break the bread. That's one of the four pillars. You know, we must break the bread of his word together. We must consume that bread in remembering what he did for us. And then that bread, which is the word, nourishes us. And what happens when that nourishes us? Our lives reflect Jesus. When they, just like Jesus said, when uh, he said, the word, the teaching, which you hear is not mine. It's the father's who sent me. And we talked about earlier that he only does what he sees the father do. And he only says what he hears the father say. That's the response it should have in us. When we hear teaching, we should consume it like bread together. And then in our love walk, it should nurture us spirit, soul, and body and as we are nourished by the word, then it should produce that result in us. If you see me, you should see him. But you know, he set this up so that he gave us all provision. Everything necessary for life and godliness has already been given to me. But here's the thing. Whether or not you see it in me is entirely up to me and you. It's up to me that that be displayed, and it's up to you to receive seeing him in me, to receive me as him. You know, I was taught growing in my spiritual walk, as I began to mature and minister, I was taught that no one is anything to you unless you say they are. So someone's not a pastor to you unless you receive them that way. And someone's not a prophet to you unless you receive their word that way. Someone's not an apostolic father or mother to you unless you deem them and honor them that way. Jesus is not Lord and Savior unless you say he is. What? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Right? So it is entirely up to us. And the relationship, this horizontal relationship, to determine how much of this we will experience. See, we have a whole globe waiting for the appearing of Christ. And the way the Hebrew and Greek words are structured, that is the appearing and the appearing and the appearing. It is the, what, present, future, permanent tense. It's always unfolding greater revelation of him in us, in the earth. But our degree of receiving that depends on what we choose. That's what the love walk is about. See, those who love him, obey him. Those who love him, keep his commands. Those who love him, that's the first step in the love walk. He first loved us. And in response, we love him. How do we love him? Not just by saying, I love you, Lord, but... I love you, Lord, but, you know, it's, it's the same way with a spouse. Because a marriage, male and female, a marriage is made in the image of Christ and the church. This is a marriage, Christ and the church. And a marriage, a natural marriage, is to pattern after that. Well, if my husband, Dr. Steve, only says, I love you, Michelle, I love you, Michelle, but he never keeps his word to me. If he, and he always does, let me just clarify that. This is just for illustration, okay? But if he didn't, if he never wanted to fellowship with me, if he never wanted to be intimate with me, if he never wanted to share the koinonia, the intimate 
places of life with me, then him saying he loves me would be meaningless to me. He would love me being there for him. But his actions and his words have to line up with what he's telling me. It's, love is a demonstrative act. The word says faith is an act and faith works by love. So love is an act. It's an action. And the type of action that the love walk is, is us obeying the teaching. It's us agreeing with God about what God has already said in our lives. Right? This is the love walk. This is how... Things come from just a mental area and a social experience as church into the reality of signs, wonders, and miracles following the word in our lives. People hunger for a strong prophetic word. They chase after those who are dynamic in the prophetic gifts. But there is nothing more prophetic than the word of God. Christ is the spirit of prophecy. There's nothing more dynamic. There's nothing more miraculous. There's nothing more powerful. There's nothing more prophetic than the spirit of Christ. And Christ is the word of God. So when we come into agreement with the word of God, we're coming into agreement with the spirit of prophecy. Look, this is how it changes from being a social group to reality of signs, wonders, and miracles in our lives. This is how we possess the things we've heard about. This, I hope you're hearing me. This is how Christ appears. Our obedience to the word, our faith in action, in obedience to the word, the love walk. This is how prophetic words manifest. Okay? Let me break that super simple for you. Loving God and loving people the way God loves people. Learning this love walk. Okay? Not the love words, but the love walk, which is an action. Learning that is how prophecy manifests in the earth. This is how we start seeing the things we have prayed for. Is by loving God, loving people, agreeing with the word, obeying the word, and what? Doing the word. Remember how I told you that this is more than a television program? Great Faith Adventures is not a wonderful faith-sounding name that we named a television broadcast. It first became a yes to God calling me to Mount Kilimanjaro. Mount Kilimanjaro is the tallest freestanding mountain peak in the world. And when the Lord said, I want you to climb, to hike Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, Africa, for the glory of God and love those along the way. When he said that to me in my spirit, not an audible outside voice, but in my spirit, of course, the first thing, if you've heard my testimony, the first thing I said was, whoa, I just got in somebody else's river and I need out right now. Okay, because... I don't own a pair of hiking boots. I don't like to sweat. I don't do things like that. I like girly things. I like to wear makeup and smell good and have nice nails. And I don't do combat boots and, you know, sleeping in a tent or a shelter with rats. And, and I don't do things like that. That's not me. I, that, I'm a girly girl, right? Yeah, my husband is agreeing with me. I'm a girly girl. I love feminine things, okay? But yet, love asked. Love asked me to do that. That is when Great Faith Adventures was born. It was born out of the yes, the obedience to the word of God. See, I had been hearing great faith word for 10 years by then. Actually, I just, I just realized that. When, when I had been hearing the word of faith, which is the word of God, for 10 solid years growing... The Lord came to me and asked me to take that great faith adventure. And I said, Lord, why would I do this? And he gave me two reasons. One, because love asked. And two, to love those along the way. That's what love asked of me. 
and that required me to learn how to hike. And I'll tell you this, it also required me to learn the biblical way of prayer, which is radically different than the church's way of prayer. A lot of religious strongholds and religious legalism and man's interpretation. See, basically, we look at prayer as us crying out to God for the things we need. And, and that is like the, the nursery level. That is the new believer. And that's not bad. I'm, if you're doing that, that is not bad. Because he says you have not because you ask not. But he also says you have not because you ask not and you ask amiss. That means you need to learn more about how to ask. Well, I have to learn to ask for what he already gave me. Because I always will get a yes. If I'm asking him for what he wants, I get it. If I'm asking for just what I want, I have to examine my motives and say, what is my motivation for that? Now, God wants us to have life for love and for pleasure. He does want us to have a life of pleasure because he created us to bring himself pleasure. So pleasure is a part of life. It's not selfish. It's not sinful unless we cause it to be. Unless it's our purpose instead of Christ being our purpose. But within Christ being my purpose, if I'm saying yes to all that God has for me, all that he's asked for me, all that he's put forth for me, all that he's provided for me, if I'm saying yes to that, he never tells me no. See, that is what my prayer is. To spend time with him, to hear his heart, and then for me to be the mouthpiece in the earth now, Christ, the body of Christ, coming through my mouth, coming Christ appearing to you in a form you may not recognize. But when each of us, as believers in Jesus Christ, as born again, saved, redeemed, Believers in Jesus Christ, obedient to the word of God, agreeing with God. When we appear, Christ should enter the room because we came. He came in this vessel. Yes. But the degree that that happens is not up to him. The degree, that, the degree that that happens in my life is completely up to me and my obedience. The the greater in agreement with the word of God that I get, the greater in agreement with the spirit of God and the love walk that I hold myself accountable to, that's the degree I walk in power. That's the degree I walk in what he wants. That's the degree that, not that he provides, but that I access that provision. Just like Tuesday nights right now, Dr. Steve is teaching on New Testament principles of kingdom stewardship. The degree that I agree with the word that he's teaching, the degree that I agree with the word that comes from God about New Testament principles of kingdom stewardship, the more I agree, the more it operates in my life. The more I agree, the more it operates in, the, in my life. The more it operates in my life, the more that those around me see the blessing of God manifest. And what? This is the key. They want him. See, that's how they see the goodness of God in my life. It's not just me handing out tracts and telling them about it. I mean, if God asks you to operate that way, that's your ministry. It's anointed. So I'm not dissing that. What I'm saying is we must also have the measure of ministry that is personal, that is our personal actions. Verse 25. This is Jesus. I have told you these things while I'm still with you. But the helper, the paraclete, the one called alongside to help, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. You say, well, see, the Holy Spirit is the one that comes alongside. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the strengthener and the standby and the advocate and the intercessor. Yes, but the Holy Spirit 
is the one who embodies in us. Right? He is housed in the believer. So we are the carrier for the comforter. We are the carrier of the paraclete that comes alongside. Not only does the the paraclete come alongside me as a believer, but he comes alongside you in me as a believer if I decide that my actions, my love walk is going to agree with God. If I don't decide to do that with the Holy Ghost that's within me, then I miss out and you will miss out. There's it's more than just my decision affecting me. God will find someone else to to be your supply of the Holy Spirit coming alongside to witness to you of his goodness. But it won't be without cost to me and I will have to reconcile that it costs you because of me. If I say no to agree with God. If I say no to obeying his word. If I say no to great faith adventures. I I can't even tell you. I can't even fathom. The cost it would have been if I had said no to that first great faith adventure. I do know. Some of the fruit on the yes side. Because the team with God TV said yes to go. All of Africa, the entire continent opened to Christian television while we were yet in the hotel. All of it opened up that very week when we were in town. When we said yes to God's great faith adventure, to love those along the way, and to take the kingdom of God to the highest mountaintop, all of that continent opened to receive Christian television across the broadcast airwaves. That is significant. What if we had said no and not agreed with God? That may not have happened at that time. Let's look at 25 and 26. Let's just back up. I've told you these things while I'm still with you. But the helper, the paraclete called alongside to help, The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things. He will help you remember. He will help you remember everything I've told you. He does not make this complicated. The Holy Spirit will help you remember everything you learn. You are held responsible to the light of the word that you have heard. And he holds you responsible because he's there to help you remember that. It's not like he's going to expect you to obey something you forgot and him not help you remember. The Holy Spirit is within us to remind us, to guide us, to comfort us, to come alongside us and equip us for the journey. Now, in verse 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my perfect peace. I give it to you not as the world gives do I give it to you do not let your heart be troubled nor let it be afraid let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge see I could have said I'm afraid of that because In the natural, I was very afraid of heights. Very afraid of heights. You know, if my as long as my two feet are on the ground, I was pretty happy. But thinking about 
crossing over that 20,000 feet in the air. And, you know, some of the mountains that are still before us are going to re require rappelling and technical climbing. I can't think on those things. What I can think on is this verse. He told me as we approach these great faith adventures, as we approach the 18 U.S. high points that I still have to go, he told me this. He told me this. Let my perfect peace calm you, Michelle, in every circumstance. Let my perfect peace, Michelle, give you courage and strength for every challenge. So when you're faced with the challenges of life, whether it's a mountain of emotional mess, whether it's a mountain of financial debt, whether it's some kind of mountain that you have in your life, emotional, spiritual, physical, marital, parental, economic, whatever your mountain is that you're facing, he told you, listen, you heard me tell you I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you really love me, you will rejoice because I'm going back to the Father. For the Father is greater than I, and I've told you now before it happens. So when it does take place, you may believe and have faith in me. So I'm going to stop and finish on that note. So he was specifically talking to those around him before he was uh, crucified, died, buried, and raised, and ascended to the Father. He told them in advance. That was for them. Yes, it was. But what we can take from this word is he told us things in his word. He told us right above here, don't be troubled. So it must be possible. When we worry and fret and are consumed by nervousness, we're going against what he told us. We're essentially saying, I don't believe you. I know you said it to me, but I don't believe you. He said here that you may believe and have faith in me. So whatever the word of God has said to us about the love walk, about our assignment in life, about God's provision, about loving others, loving God and coming into agreement with the love walk. He has told us in these passages that he will supply the paraclete, the comforter, the counselor, the teacher, the one comes alongside to help us. He will supply the helper. He will supply the courage and he will supply the strength for every challenge. He has told us that it's us. It's up to us to agree with God. It's up to us in the love walk to agree with the word of God. It's up to us to say yes to God's great faith adventure. See, our receipt of all that he's given us, even our receipt to the prayers, the answers to the prayers we pray, that is depending on how we agree with what he said. If we're not in agreement with what he said, it's like trying to get something from him with closed fists. You're like, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. And he is a open arms God. He has served it on a silver or a gold platter. Not just silver as man looks at it, but a pure gold platter. And said, here, I provide. I will give it to you. 